Craig, brand new season. How, how's pre-season going? It's a boring question. How's pre-season going? Yeah, really good, mate. Yeah. Um, it's, I guess you get the, the, the standard answer from me. I'm not going to tell you we've had a, good, a bad pre-season. I think it's looking, it's looking negative. Um, but no, really, really positive. Um, a lot of new players have come in. Age profiles come down. We've had longer days, tougher days. Um, but it's been, it's been good to see how the how the group develops and how they've, how they've built the bonds and the connections. And uh, I was speaking to Paul McShane not so long back, and he was saying that. At the start of the season, he, he'd lost a lot of his mates that he'd been he'd been been with for, for a number of years. So it was pretty daunting for him to come back and see all these new faces. He's had to he's had to build new connections as well. So I think that's it's sort of freshening the place up a little bit. Players have mentioned it's been tougher than it has been perhaps in the past. Is that a, is that a Craig Lingard thing to have a tough pre-season? Um, no, and it's not it's, it's not something that I, that's, that I want to go and so I'm going to be here every single day that you come. I just I just felt that after we had after last season and. Um, it was too too easy to beat last year, so we needed to build a little bit of resilience. Um, so the, the age profile, it's allowed us to do that. It's allowed us to, to do longer days and do double, triple sessions during the day. Um, just to see what they've got, really. It's, you know, pre-season is it's always tough, and every club that you'll, that you'll speak to will say it's one of, it's one of the most tough pre-seasons that I've had. You, you get that everywhere you go, but I think we needed that this year. Particularly with new players coming in, we've got to see what we've got, you know, the sort of attitude that we've got, how far can we push them, how do we deal with adversity, because you're going to get that in a game, you have to, do, you have to defend the repeat sets back to back on your own goal line. And, um, and I think like last season we were, we were too easy to beat and we crumbled a little bit too easy, so we've got to try and build that, that adversity, that, that resilience to adversity. Having time at the club last year, how important was that taking over this role coming to this year? This pros and cons to it, because um, you can, I guess, you've got in, in, in the back of your mind what went wrong last year, uh, which again can be a positive and a negative as well, because you've got some preconceived ideas about what, why things happened, rather than coming in with, with a fresh pair of eyes. But I think it's, I think it's helped certainly developing the connection with the players that were here last year and getting their trust and getting their buy-in. Um, you know, and I think that's been that's been really key for me having the, having the buy-in of the, the senior players and with me, with me stepping up from. Uh, from assistant to, to head coach and then the new players coming in as well obviously they're coming in with fresh eyes but rugby league's a small community and a lot of people talk about in, in rugby league and they will have a lot of stories about what were right at the club last year what were wrong at the club last year so again it's, 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 it's helping their perceptions that change their perceptions that the, that the clubs knew this year we try to change from top to bottom off the field on the field and it's it's, it's, it's a project and it's not going to be something that's going to happen overnight. Obviously you've found plenty of coaching experience but going into one of the 12 elite jobs in the Northern Hemisphere, do you do you, do you change, have you felt yourself change as a person, as a coach? No, no I, don't, I don't think you can change, I don't think you can you can try and pretend to be something that you're not, I'm not, I'm not a good enough actor to, to keep it up 12 months a year, so if you try and be something that you're not, you, you, you eventually revert back to what you are anyway, so um, I'm, I, I try to be as, as genuine as, as, as I possibly can be and, and what you see is, is me. Um, I guess it's, it's, do you need to be any different if you're in a full-time rugby than if you are a part-time rugby? I don't know. It's, it's about working in, working in the environment that you are and, and working out what's best for that environment. So I think it's, it's, it's rugby league, isn't it? Bridlington. Yes. Did you enjoy going into the sea with the rest of your um, squad? I wouldn't say I enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> it was very, very cold. Uh, but I think it was, it was something that... I think I needed to do. If you're asking the, if you're asking the players to go in and do it, then you know, crack on and do it yourself. So I think so. It's that collective. You know, we're in, we're in this together. We're starting the season together. We know it all the way through together. So that's all getting a squad with players from all over the place. Uh, how important was the the chat about culture earlier this week? With, with yeah, it's massive. Is that? I mean, I'm, I'm massive on, 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 on the heritage of the game and, and, and the history of the game anyway. But when you when you've got players that are coming into your group from from the other side of the world. It can be, it can be daunting for them. You know, they've, they've, tra- they've travelled all the way from the other side of the world. Some have got the family over here as well, relocated, and it's, it's it's a brand new life for them. So I think it's important that they feel welcomed and, and, and we welcome them into our family as well, and find a little bit about, a little bit about them and, and, and their history and what we've gone through to get to where they are. Um, and you, you learn something new about each other. Um, you, you, come, you come train, and you see what you see at training. You've got people got lives away from training. You don't necessarily always always see what's going on on the surface. So it's, I think it always it helps to see a more human side of the people you're playing with. New season, new rules, new interpretations of rules. How have you been working with those in, in preparation? Yeah, it's, uh, I think you're right. It's the it's the interpretation of the rules rather than the rules themselves. Um, we've had we've got a generation of players that have never had to play the ball correctly. 
because we've allowed it to go to a certain, certain point now where people just stand up and roll it through the legs. So I think it's a real good, uh, a real good thing that we that we revert back to the correctness of the play of the ball and a genuine attempt to play the ball. Um, it got, it got to a point where it was just ridiculous and it was messy and it was, it was unattractive to watch and appealing to watch. Um, so we've you, you put people in, in fatigue situations and that will take you, take you down to the floor, let them get marked up, up and square, play the ball correctly, so we've just repped it constantly um, under fatigue situations and we've been done once in the two friendlies for not playing the ball correctly and that will buy George Griffin who missed a lot of the early part of pre-season through injury so he'd not done the amount of reps that the players had done so hopefully the stuff that we've done we've changed and old habits of players just getting up and rolling through legs or stepping over it and one, one infringement in the two games for, for that initial uh, initial rule interpretation is it's pretty, pretty good for us. So you know at the age where you can say things were better in my day when we used to <laughs> play the ball? Yeah I'm always, I'm always conscious, uh, conscious not, to, not to bring uh, that sort of statement in, in, in my day we did this and my, my day we did that. I think, I think the fans have got a little bit of a role to play in that as well and, and understanding that, there, that there's going to be teething problems or issues around it and um, I've been to a couple of friends already where I've not been coaching and yeah, fans are difficult to please aren't they? You know, if, if they don't play the ball correctly they complain, they complain that they don't play the ball correctly. If the referee pulls up they complain that it's all about you. You know, We've not come to watch you if you touch a game. Anymore. So the fans have got to understand that as well. That there's going to be, there's going to be Games that might get a little bit, a little bit messy and a bit stop start, but that, that responsibility is on the players. And the, the players know the rules. The players know, know what they've got to do. Know what they can and what they can't do. So if, if the referee's penalised, and there's, there's a reason for that because the players have done something wrong. So I think as us as players, uh, players and coaches, they've got a responsibility for that as well. But the fans have got to have that responsibility. It's not going to be a free-flowing game at the start of the season. Players have said to me they want Castle to be more consistent, more competitive this year. Is that the message you're trying to get across? Yeah, definitely. Um, and again. I've, I feel like I repeat myself, I say it all the time to the players, it's, we want to be difficult to beat. Um, I think if you're difficult to beat and you're more resilient to defend, to defend your own goal line, you'll turn some close losses into close wins. And if we can do that, then that, you hopefully get that little bit of momentum and a snowball effect where you're picking games, picking games up that you, that you maybe normally lose. Um, again, last year we were, we were too, easy to, too easy to beat or too easy to, to go out of that arm wrestle, that set for set contest. I think teams know last year that if they went... 15, 20 minutes in a set for set contest, we break first. We can't be that team that breaks first this year. You know, we've got to make sure we're more resilient and we can go for longer. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why we've, we extended the days and made tra train a little bit tougher to put them in them difficult situations, get used to being in difficult situations.